and welcome to episode 86 of Movies and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Marcus. And this is the review show that reviews genre movies from the beginning sometimes. Today, we are going to go into a movie, but before we do that, we have to clean up some stuff from last week. Yes, we gotta clean up some stuff from last week. Let me take this mask off real quick. Uh, yeah, we gotta clean up some shit from last week, guys, because we kind of rushed out of it for some reason. Uh, last week was, taking a range from TJ real quick, uh, was this amazing Spider-Man review. And uh, we have two things that we could recall that we have to clean up. First things first, the universe number from for the amazing Spider-Man was... 120,703. Maybe we need to talk about that. Because I think I recall asking, does it tie into the new MCU? But I got it kind of because of the multiverse. Anyways, uh, there's that. And then there's also, there was, I don't know how I forgot this. There is a, God, did you hear that? Did you hear that thunder? Yeah, I hear it. Damn. We're going through a thunderstorm, guys. So like, hopefully you guys don't hear this in the edit. But if, we, if so. If we do it, just us. consider it atmosphere. <laughs> and there's also, there is a end credit sequence um, in which Dr. Connors, the lizard, is in jail, and he's introduced, or he's uh, he's approached by a gentleman in a, in a dark, he is just talking to him about the parents of Peter Parker. And Dr. Connors is like, don't, don't go after him, he's a good kid, Ethan B. And then I remember us talking about how much of a redemption that is for the lizard in the beginning of redemption, I was against it. But yeah, do you have something to talk about to say about this? Well, just that this guy is a character from the comics called The Gentleman. The Gentleman. Like, yes. Um, he apparently... Killed Peter Parker's parents, so that's a big thing. Uh, why? I don't know. Wait, what? I don't know. Wait, I just... Do you not know because you haven't read into it, or you don't know because they haven't really dived in, dive into it? I didn't read into it. Okay. Because I assume there's got to be a reason why he has done the things he's Well, the doing. problem is, he debuted in like the Civil War comics, but okay. he's not like a major player in the in the comics at all. He He's from a novel, a Spider-Man novel. Oh, that's so Where he kills the parents of Peter Parker. But, like, he's got to have a reason to do so, obviously. Obviously, but I never read the novel. And I'm yeah, not, yeah. I, didn't, I, I literally remembered that we were doing this three minutes before we yeah. started recording, so... <laughs> I don't have a deal. If people really want to know, they can find out. Yeah, and like We're the only thing towards Marvel Comics. The only thing it says in comics for him is that he survived uh, World War Two, and he was an associate of Kingpin. And then when Punisher killed, Ki- or and when Shield announced that Punisher killed uh, Kingpin, him and uh, the gentleman Jigsaw argued what their next course of action should be. That was it. Punisher kills Kingpin. I think. He was accused of it in Civil War. I don't know if that's actually what happens. It might have been another thing where Kingpin faked his death. Well, see, now that leads me to another thing. God damn it. Rabbit holes, man. Or we're in the Batman podcast, the podcast. So, Punisher kills people, right? Yes. But how does he have, like, villains, recurring villains? If he does not just kill, like, why does he not kill Kingpin or whatever is a big villain to him? Because normally they get away or they have um, uh, slasher villain powers where he attempts to kill him in some gruesome way and they manage to survive it huh. okay i guess so yeah. i expect his stuff to be more grounded but it's still comics so i guess that makes sense but like normally he's just up against guys who are as skilled as him and they can get away from him okay that's fair i guess that's fair. um I, that's all i have to say about the cleanup from episode whatever of spider-man okay. yeah no that was just stuff we forgot to because we rushed out of that review for some reason because yeah. i think we were arguing the whole time in that one it was me going hard at it, and you were defending it. And I was like, okay, screw this movie. So that's what it was. So yeah. Anyways, back to the uh, Batman one. I put my mask back. I on. didn't even tell them what we were covering yet in this. Well, I'm doing a Batman impersonation, so I assume they would figure what we're doing. I don't know. I don't know. You don't have the greatest fans. <laughs> I miss talking shit on the fans so much. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we are going into the 10, 2012 movie, The Dark Knight Rises. Yay! I am working on bringing it up the credits because for some reason I had closed it. Oh my God, you're really not prepared for this one, are you? You made me go into Spider-Man stuff, so I, was, I must have picked it up that page to do that. This movie was directed by Christopher Nolan, screenplay by Jonathan and Christopher Nolan. It, it feels like a Christopher Nolan movie. Story by David S. Goyer and Christopher Nolan. Produced by Emma Thomas, Christopher Nolan, and Charles Rovin. It stars Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Anne Hathaway, Tom Hardy, Marion... <laughs> 
I've never seen you fall so long in the credits before. Wow. <laughs> Marion Cot- Cotill- or Cotilliard? Cotillard? Probably. Cotillard? Sure. Justin Gorvin, Gordon Levitt, Morgan Freeman, Matthew Modine, Ben Mendelsohn, Burn Co- Burn Gorman, Nestor Carbonell, Carbonell, Juno Temple, Temple, Josh Stewart, Alan. Oh, God. <laughs> Abbott Bull. Abbott Bull. There you go. Aiden yeah. Gillian, Brett Cullen, Chris Ellis, Tom Conti, Danielle Sunjata, Liam Neeson, not Nielsen. Oh, yeah, that's the Neil Neeson. Duh. I don't know what the frick I was thinking. Yeah, anyway. I that. Gillian Murphy. Josh Pence, Cillian Murphy, Indian Wadsworth, John Nolan, William Devane, uh, Rob Brown, Christopher Judge. I forgot Desmond Harrington. I didn't get to him yet. Desmond Harrington. Noel Googly? Googla me? I don't know. Thomas Lennon, Senator Patrick Leahy. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. A bunch of Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Ben Roth, Roethlisberger, Heinz Ward, Troy Palamalu, Willie Colin, Marquise Pouncey, Mark Wallace, Heath Miller, Aaron Smith, Ryan Clark, J- what? James Ferrier, Lamar Woodley. Uh, what? And Casey, there's never been this many. C- Casey Hampton. They like named all the extras and stuff. All the big time people. Uh, you can't forget the coach. Bill Cow Cow Cowher. We're always not sports fans on this podcast. The Pittsburgh mayor. The Pittsburgh mayor Luke Robinstall. At the mayor, these are the players and mayors at the time, obviously. Right. Um, they're apparently oh. all those guys the Pittsburgh Steelers apparently in it because the person who owned the Steelers apparently was with the company that owned the Dark Knight Rises at the time yes. or some crap like that but that's it that's everyone that was in this goddamn movie that's a lot of people DJ. well it's two hours and 45 minutes long it's just gotta have a lot of people does it though does it really need all these people uh, let's see here. This movie had a $230 million budget and made $1.08 billion. Placing it where in the box office, Marcus? Oh, the box office. Hey, I'm sorry I'm doing this whole one. Um, you think the box office is your alley, TJ? <laughs> Am I doing all this? Anyways, the box office. This movie made, how much, wait, what, what'd you say? $1.08 billion. What, what, what was it, did it? How much did it cost to make? Two hundred and thirty. It cost two hundred thirty million dollars, and it grossed one point oh eight billion dollars. That's insane. It still places at three in the top three box office. We did this last week, so we're doing only doing the top three. So one point oh eight billion is The Dark Knight, and number two, Skyfall with one point one billion, and number one. 1.5 billion the Avengers. Yeah, okay. That's that's it. That's it. So, um, I guess we can go into the behind the scenes. There's a lot of behind the scenes yeah, shit. Yes. And I do not care about any of it. A lot. I know the, the one, I haven't read the behind the scenes shit, but I know from recalling Anne Hathaway broke an IMAX camera. She yeah. Broke I, a Batmobile in, or Bat, Bat cycle into it. Right? There was apparently a lot of accidents. Yes. There were, um, Let's see. Film in. Film in. Film in. Location. Yeah, several accidents occurred during the production of the film. A tractor trailer crashed into the main entrance. No one was injured. Apparently, a, a stuntman, stuntman parachutist crashed through a roof of a home. Jesus. I don't even remember there were... Would there, oh, I guess parachutes were in the beginning of the movie. Oh, oh yeah. Are they alive? Yeah, they, no one was seriously injured. What? <laughs> no f***ing way. Yeah, I, uh, he um, later crashed through the roof of a home in Scotland and became wedged there after he, a failed landing during a skydive stunt. He was not seriously injured. Oh, then Hathaway's stunt double crashed into a, ca- a ca- into an IMAX yeah. thing that required her to drive one of those ridiculous vehicles. No injuries in that, but the camera was destroyed. A lot of money right there, man. And then... There was a second accident and took the place in Pittsburgh when a truck carrying a then unidentified vehicle, oh, carrying the stupid bat Bomb. plane thing, oh. went off course and crashed into a lightning array, damaging the model aircraft, which delayed production and while well, it was repaired. So there was a lot of that. Not bad, though, for a, as big as movie is, only a few accidents, which is bound to happen. So then, like, uh, of course. The big thing was the Colorado shoot, and we got to talk about that a little bit. Oh, shit. Was that during this? 
Yeah, where the, it was during the um from yeah. one of the premieres, some idiot came in with a gun and killed some people. I totally forgot about that because it was the whole Joker thing, right, or some shit. That was debunked. He never came in and identified okay. himself as a Joker, but yeah, some idiot oh. just came in and killed twelve people in the movie theater. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Twelve just, people? Yeah. Well, Jesus. Killing, yeah, killing twelve people and injuring fifty eight others. God damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, USA, USA, US. No. I don't want to talk about this guy anymore because I don't want to glorify his actions or anything. So we're just gonna. Well, 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 should I cut this on a podcast then? No, it's, or do it's, we have to mention it because it's we part have of to mention system. it because it's a Dark Knight Rise thing. But I just wanted to mention it. No, we identified it. It was bad. Let's not glorify uh, it. And thoughts and prayers go out to the victims. I also wanted to bring Is up this the last one that's happened. Like, we don't have any more theater shootings, do we? Uh, not that we, not that has. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think there's anything else that deals with at least not with superhero movies but is there, no, is there no theater shooting now not that i've heard but you know there's a mass shoot in in america every day so hey hey, hey watch yourself i'm just saying there you're is thin, you're on thin ice there buddy it's statistically there is hey, so hey, the hey. chances that it happens in a theater is very possible okay, that's just spouting facts then go into the like critical response. I mean, it's interesting the critical response. Like it. Well, I don't really, want to hear this part because I don't want it to influence how I feel about this movie. Well, I don't want to take someone else's words to put it into words. I just wanted I to mention, like, when it was released, everybody was on board. Okay, but it seems like as time passed, the reviews got worse. Makes sense. You know what I mean? Like everyone started to think. But the reason I wanted to bring it up because apparently. This was uh, Robert Ebert's last DC movie he oh, no way. reviewed before he died in 2013. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. He gave a good rating, I see. Holy shit. So, yeah, that was sad. And then there was actually some controversy with the critical reception, too. Yeah, yeah a couple people were giving it bad reviews. And in reaction to it, the idiot fans oh. um, started to threaten people with violence and threaten to take down people's websites for giving the movie bad reviews. So we can't have nice things. Yep. Yeah. But in retrospect, the reviews have been mixed mixed or negative. So like imagine having such a, a, a vile reaction to someone's negative review of content. You want to shut down their business. Like, yeah. What a f-ing moron you must be. I th- you know, you would think it was a, mo- a recent thing, but this is all the way back in 2012. I know, I so. know. And it's like, and obviously it's been going on probably for forever in our history, but it's just like, it's such a weird... It's just more prevalent these days. Yeah, well, because it's more in your face now. You don't like the thing I like, I want your... Now, we're going to have to go into a little bit of politics here. Yay. <laughs> I know a lot of viewers are like, this podcast already a little bit of politics here is because it's part of the behind the scenes stuff oh god what's the politics tj which actually i didn't even know about until reading this um thing behind it and now i can see the correlations which made me kind of like not like oh, the movie no, a little bit tr- more no 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 oh, no, no. <laughs> no but <laughs> When this came out, do you remember Occupied Wall Street? Yeah, the ninety nine percent, right? Where people yeah, the, they were uh, they were pretty much protests and money yes. and politics. Yes, yes. Well, a lot of people were thinking that it, it was saying that um, this movie has conservative leanings and that Bane they portraying Bane as the Occupy Wall Street guys. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember this movie when this movie came out. I didn't put that together back then, but I was in college. Like, oh, they're doing that thing right now. But yeah, okay. Yeah, so people are like, this this is just a cons- you're just ex- making them out to be extremists, and Bane's just an extremist to be defeated by conservatism and stuff like that. Yeah, yes. Obviously, no one denies it, but who knows? And the correlations are clearly there. Yeah, yeah. but you know. But then again, like he's the, Bane's the bad guy, right? So yeah, he's just using it as a front. Bane's obviously. the bad guy, so the Occupy Wall Street guys are the bad guys. No, no, but I'm saying he's like he's also like mimicking probably a good cause just to get people riled up. So I mean, that's all speculation. That could be yes, the yes. left say just making stuff up. Could be true. Don't know. But to flip the thing around, Rush Limbaugh <laughs> said the film was biased against presidential nominee Rip not Rip Mitt, Mitt Romney. Romney. Holy shit, what a time period. Yeah. Because Bane's name was a homophone 
for Bain Capital. I remember this. God damn, I remember this. What a time to be grasping on straws. Yeah, so that's how stupid well, see, this, that's how fair. stupid that was. How accurate of this Bane character is to the comic books, DJ? Not accurate 100% so at all. Maybe these people have some, you know, well, water to their, uh, water to the way to that. Water. Well, not Rush Limbaugh. But oh, I think he does stuff. You know, definitely not him. He's a fucking whack job anyways. Because Bane is not a homophone for Bane Capital. No, not at all. I remember when this came out and that was a thing. But everything else, like maybe these people have. I mean, it is a homophone or whatever he said it was, but. Yeah, yeah, but not directly <laughs> like on purpose. It's not on purpose, yeah. Or, or <laughs> fucking who knows? Maybe it was. Like maybe Chris Nolan picked that character just like, nah, I not doubt that. But, you know. No, I don't think so. All right. So this movie is has um, taken inspiration from three different sources essentially which are batman nightfall which is bane's debut where he comes in and breaks batman's back Spoiler. the dark knight returns that overrated rap that we'll get to <laughs> and then no man's lands another batman story arc where um uh, gotham is uh cut off from the rest of america because of a natural disaster and then the gangs take over and it- they divide it up amongst themselves and so forth and so forth. But I also, I bring that up because apparently this story was also influenced by Charles Dickens' The Tale of Two Cities for some reason. Really? Yeah, they, it's mentioned a few times that Nolan took inspiration from that. Why did you need to take inspiration from a novel when you have 70 years of comic books to fall back on? Why are you asking questions, TJ? <laughs> It's just, it's like, it's not like you didn't have plenty of things to fall back on that you go and take from a different story that, no wonder why this, no wonder why this story is so bloated and so all over the place. I mean, yeah. You have four different, four different interpretations in here for some reason. Anyway, I think that's all behind the scenes stuff. I don't have anything to add to it. I mean, the movie won a bunch of awards too, but who cares? Of course. But yeah, I think that's that. Uh, yeah, we can move on with, uh, I did only have one trailer for this, okay. which was the Injustice video game, so, interesting. Injustice video game. Where Superman turns yeah, evil. Know. It's just, I'm trying to figure out why. Well, I guess because Bane's in it, Batman's in it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so... I guess they this it was probably also coming out around that time. So yeah. but yeah, that's that for that. And with all that out of the way, I think we're ready to dive into this movie. I hope so. Alright. So we're gonna be doing this a little bit differently than normally because oh, trailers. That was the trailer, the injustice. Oh fuck, I was not paying attention. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. So I'm gonna be doing this a little bit differently than other what other than what we normally do because we did this the way we normally do it we'd be here for four hours so the movie opens up with uh commissioner gordon eulogizing harvey Dent. i don't know if that's from the last movie or not no they they made it for this one they did they didn't have that eulogy from the last movie at the end of it i don't recall no because it was maybe i don't know if that's a scene from the last movie or not but we open up with that and pretty much uh, we go into an action movie yeah. where where Bane hijacks a plane for reasons because it shows how awesome it is, and no one wanted to make this. Scene. Bec- so I have a few questions about this plane s- sequence. Yes. So would a plane fall apart if it was drag vertically like that, like they did at this? Well, that's all real. They did, the thing they did that, that that's all real life stuff. What do you mean it's all real life stuff? What they did right there, like, besides the plane pieces falling to the ground, they had a plane in the air like that. Yeah, but you can always design a plane to fall apart. Probably, but... So I'm just wondering if that actually happened in real life, if it would have, like, torn to pieces like that. Possibly, because it's not constructed to be, maybe, possibly. And it, was just, it just felt, it seemed weird with the physics and stuff like that. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if that was, like, real or something. And then, so, you know, Bane's on this plane, they kidnap. They're, they're there to kidnap a scientist that killing people, blah, blah, blah. So he kidnaps the scientist, right? Yeah. Why did he take his blood? To, so the bot, when they find the body, they taste the blood. I, I figured he was putting up that blood, transfusing the blood into the corpse he brought with him. And so when that corpse is on fire, they can see some of the blood. And ideally, it should be the blood of the scientist. Oh. Yes. I took it they were transfusing blood from this dead guy to him. No, no, they're putting blood in I was like, why are they doing that? So the guy's DNA is there. 
amongst the wreckage. I gotcha. Yes. But going with the dead bodies, I had a question with the dead bodies. Okay. He brought one dead body from the scientists, right? Yes. And he tells one of his guys, stay back, it's part of the plan, they need bodies. Yeah, because they're shit. all zealots following Dane. Yes. Why not just bring an extra body? That's <laughs> true, <laughs> Why not just bring an extra body? I well, get you're trying to, I get he's trying to show as a writer and director the audience that this is how crazy and this is how fanatical these people are for Bane, etc. and how ruthless Bane is. I get that, but just story wise, that makes no sense. Well, like I guess they needed someone that would be tied well, to Bane. How would they tie it to Bane? Like if, if one the bodies are all burned up in fire and wreckage, like how you tie that body to the Bane? And now why not do the same blood thing you did with that guy if the other guy? Yeah, I don't know. Why <laughs> kill this guy if you don't need to kill this guy? So I don't know. There's a lot of questions in this opening thing. Yes, and that's the thing about this movie. It's a lot of. The rule of cool to outgo with the knowledge and logic most of the time. And that's like my biggest pet peeve with this movie is it's cool, so let's do it. It's like, yeah, it's cool, but if you think about anything about this movie for a second more than it should be thought about, it starts crumbling down a little bit. Like, there's a lot of scenes in this movie where you and I are talking on screen, and just off camera, off screen, there's someone standing there waiting to jump in. Like, you didn't expect me to be here. Like, literally, you should have seen that person there, see the thing hovering overneath. But, like, for the rule of cool for the movie, it's very theatrical and cool to have this come out in no or last second. So it's like... Right. I mean, so, a lot. so this movie also takes place eight years yes. after the last movie. So I'm crazy. assuming the Bane plane thing happened relatively close to after the last movie. Why? Because it follows Commissioner Gordon's eulogy of debt, which you wouldn't have a eulogy to debt unless it was immediately after his death. Unless it was like part of a ceremony of like, commemorating eight years after that's another part of this movie that's really frustrated they don't tell you time differentiate when anything's happening or where anything is so it's you're always confused about how long is things happen and stuff like that yes yes all right so yeah anyway it's takes place eight years later and then the entire first act is just catching up essentially it's you've and introducing us to the new players in town so you got like for some reason, Bruce stopped being Batman. Why? I thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fuck, thank you. It's like I did my thing. I, I get you're on the run. No, because him stopping Batman and just the forces. Like, yeah. No. No. Teach. I'm just. I'm, I'm thinking like my minute right now. So he stops being Batman because Dent's thing. Apparently, Dent's death cured crime in Gotham. Sure. Whatever. It stopped sure. organized crime. That doesn't stop Does the crazies. Though? Does it really stop organized crime? No, but they, they're all, they're, this, realistically, they're like, "Oh, he's dead. We should stop now, guys." Just, just That's give, stupid. just, just giving them the fact that say, yeah, all organized crime is done in Gotham. Sure, Which, whatever. It, it wouldn't happen that way. But, for sure. But Joker was the catalyst for a more in the more insane guys to yes. step up. So why would they not start taking over? Like exactly. So what do you need more Batman and more police? Yeah, and, more and you bullshit? just you just fighting the cops like you were in the in the original. It's like it makes no sense he'd be gone. I mean, like there's way be way more chaos and anarchy going on. Yeah, that makes it does no why I know why they did it because he fucking to die and shit and no well, they. What? They did it because in the Dark Knight Returns movie, he's been out of Batman for so long, and this is his return. And that's fine, but the crime does not dissipate. It does no, not no, dissipate. it's it's garbage, and it's not yeah. fine that they do it. It was a blatant ripoff for no reason. Like, what happened to his leg? Why is his leg hurt? Yeah, right? Like, it's, what happened to him? They don't explain any of that. It's logical. It's stupid. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just watched the movie last night to forgot all about that stupidity. Well, that's because you forget about that because th- this all happens in the first act and then in the third act, second act, he's back as Batman and it's like nothing ever happened. He doesn't <laughs> struggle with the fact that he was gone forever. Uh-huh. He, like, there's there's r- literally no consequences for him not being Batman in the latest eight years. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <sighs> anyway, so yeah. So Bruce is, you know, moping in his thing because there's no crime to fight. Alfred's like... Alfred makes no sense either. He's like, I'm glad that you're not out there being Batman, but I want you to be out there being Batman, essentially. Yes. But when you're Batman, I can't have you being Batman anymore. So yeah, his motivation's all over the place. It's like, all right, we get, we only have um, this much money to play Michael Caine, so we got to get him out after the first act. <laughs> But yeah, so there's that, and then Gordon's dealing with the fact that he lied for the good of the city, and he's debating on that, and meanwhile, he's 
trying to figure out the whole... Uh, they misused Gordon in this movie. So much, CJ. He's barely in this movie. Exactly. He's barely in it. And they make him seem so dumb in the end. And so, yeah. So, Gordon, that's his old dilemma. You know, he's just there to do things when things need to be done, essentially. And then we get introduced to uh, Kate, who is Talia Ghoul's uh, spoilers. She's... She's behind the whole thing, so we'll come back to her. But in the beginning of the movie, they don't even do a good job foreshadowing her. No. Because, like, she's on Bruce's side most of the time. She's helping along the way. Mm-hmm. And sure, it's her plan or something like that. But it's, like, it's a stupid twist. And it connects everything, which is dumb. And then, of course, we get Catwoman. And I actually like Anne Hathaway in this, honestly. I hated her outfit. That was the most distracting part, in my opinion. Well, yeah, I mean, her outfit was stupid. But, like... It was just ridiculous. Her as Catwoman... City outfit. Her as Catwoman was fine. Like, her yeah, stuff... She was okay. I mean, she didn't have a lot to do, but... You know, but she was Catwoman. She stole again, things. But again, like the movie without her, it would have been the same movie in my opinion. Like, just yeah, no, she sh- added to it. No, but like she did fine with what she had. I, yeah, but like it was like a fair comparison. Like they, ha- there was a scene where she's dancing with ba- 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 Bruce Wayne, and either this after the second act, it's like, oh yeah, I remember they did the same thing in the last Batman movie with her of uh, Catwoman with uh, Michael Keaton. And like that dance and that reveal later on in that movie was way better than this. Yeah, like their chemistry in that movie was way better than their chemistry in this. Well, movie. I'm not talking about her chemistry with Bruce because there's practically no chemistry. They, and this, this falls on the fault why Christopher Nolan is a great director because he well, just does not know how to make characters people. I was going to bring this up later in my notes, but he rushes the two biggest romances that Batman has in comics in this one movie. Yes. He, with yes. Talia Al Ghul and a Catwoman. And they're both yes. severely rushed. They, they don't, he doesn't really have chemistry with either one of them, but it's just and, there because that's what we want to do. Yes. That's that's a note actually. That's kind of what I, I have a note that's, that's like pretty much just criticizing the editing and the pacing of this movie. Like it's just so much in this movie, but yeah, it's so boring. And it's, it's the editing is just in the sense of like it's trying to make suspense and make you care about things, but it just does falls flat in such a way. But yeah. And then we got um Robin. Stupid. So Gordon Levitt is a uh, cop, and he gets promoted. I hate the, uh, I hate the Boston he, cop shit. This movie, too, he, by the way. He, yeah, we'll we'll get to that. We get we get a New York moment later. Uh, Gordon Levitt's a cop, but he's more along the line of the Tim Drake um, Robin because he in the comics Tim Drake became Robin because he figured out who Batman and Robin was. So wait, what? Wait, what? So how do you figure it out in the comic books? He um he was an above average intelligence and was a like detective and he's been following this following batman and robin around for years and he finally got around and deduced it and confronted them about it and what? they couldn't so he didn't tell by a smile or anything no he actually did detective work and figured it out weird wow so good writing okay well yeah but it was also over a course of a period of time too i think but we didn't have that time here because Batman was going for eight years for some reason. Yeah, no, this guy just saw Batman one time kid. and yeah. and saw that his eyes are the same as his uh-huh. or some shit like that. Yeah. And yeah. he just knew. And Bruce is like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Doesn't deny it. No, just, again, bad writing. Gotcha. Yeah, and then, you know, and then Alfred, you know, spoils the ending by telling us his dream. He's like, you know, when you left Gotham the first time, I didn't want you to come back. Bullshit. <laughs> Whatever. Everyone knows the end of my now. Yes. Moving on to that one. We learned that Bane is in the League of Shadows and stuff like that. Which I think, is he like that in the comic books? No, he has nothing to do. Yeah. And this this, this is the problem. Like, it rehashed a lot in the last movie. Or from the first movie. The League of Shadows motivations. And like, we saw this, we don't care. This isn't Bane, I don't care. Like, the yeah. motivations, and there's like, we've seen this, and it failed the first time. I don't care about seeing this shit happen again and failing for the second time. Yeah. And th- that's essentially the first act of the whole movie. We're just introducing all these new elements. All yeah. these new characters. It's all all the this same, but slightly different. Bull- like. Yeah, all this bull crap that is supposed to lead up to stuff. Kind of does, but doesn't do it well. <laughs> No, no. Like Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy has been. It's good. It's good until the twist at the end. Like, oh. Like, I don't It takes everything out from under his wings, but it's good. But it's his acting is fine. 
Yes. It's just he's not a physical enough presence as Bane. Yep, today. I was gonna say that. It's like I wish they would have hired like a big muscular bound you know muscular what they, or someone just huge. They, if they really wanted Tom Hardy, they could have just had a stunt guy play Bane and have him do the voice or something. Yeah, but then why have that, right? Like, but yeah, like I don't know. It's just, Bane, and it's no, it's not Bane. It's just some random guy in a mask. Yes, yes. And speaking of the mask, why did they go with the mask? Stupid thing. It's just. For more drama, he's in constant pain and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, it's... why not just go with Venom? Exactly, because I guess they're trying to stay away from that kind of fascinational, fantastical way. But... It's fantastic. This whole movie is fantastical. I know. I, I'm it's... just trying to think of their logic, even though their logic Venom's is kind of stupid. Stylistic. It is. It is. Just get a big muscular. Uh... <laughs> get a big, get, get a big bulking dude who's a Hispanic. Like, uh... Is he Hispanic or something? He's a luchador, but like, what, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's Hispanic, is. yeah. Like, it's just like, this is a bad version of Bane. It's, both, it's a good version, but like, not as what Bane should be. You know, it's funny. We're going to get to the twist later. And I'm oh. going to say, but when the twist reveal comes up, I wrote, so Bane is still a henchman, even from Batman and Robin in this movie. Yes, yes, yes. At least no, that, I, at least in the Batman and Robin movie, he would look like Bane. Exactly. And that was just like, probably the comic book purist of what's coming out, like the purist. Like, like come on, guys. We got to do it. Yeah, do but it this, is, this is just like, this is what we, this feels like movie director of changing stuff you know what i mean for the sake yeah. he wanted to do it that way yes. it doesn't feel like a, an interpretation it feels like a director said this is what i want to do yes and again tom hardy did a great job at it he did great he was fine but you know yeah a lot of his famous lines are so cliche well at this point you don't think yeah yeah no yeah. not even not even, even at they this time cliched, yeah. they're cliched and badly written come yes. on yes extremely just delivered well that's all yeah that's all it was. Just the good delivery made those mediocre lines pretty okay. I mean, obviously Tom Hardy did a good time, a good job because everybody still does his voice. At least, yes. meanwhile, everyone still makes fun of Kristen Bale for his terrible Batman. Exactly, oh, still so bad, so, and it's still bad in this movie. Which this gives way back to the Batman thing. Just in like, fact, Batman it's has good worse. Rose this is worse. His voice is worse in this movie than it's I ever been. Worse in this one, yeah. What was the okay. what, about, what about the Rogue Gallery? I'm sorry. Oh, it just shows that he that Batman has a strong rose gallery. That's between Bane, Catwoman, oh, yeah. Joker, Rajah, the, only, the only person Talia. who who has even remotely close to a, a, a rival his rose gallery is the Flash. But they're more goofy than they are like menacing him. Yeah, like they're actual like almost like bank robbers and stuff like that. And you know they're thieves and stuff. Not so much as like crazy yes. mental people. Yes. I mean, there's, they're all, in, all the villains in Hero World's insane in some point or another, but still. Of course. But not you have to be like insane that. enough to dress up as something and theme yourself after a certain thing, so. Sorry for distracting. So what, so what, what are we talking about? Uh, th- I just summed up the first act. That's okay. pretty much it. So after, that was pretty much the first act leading up. And then everything starts happening at the stock exchange, um, where Bane goes, he's taking over the stock exchange. My first question about the stock exchange, do they still have shoe shine boys at the stock exchange? I think that's still like a common practice in a lot of places for for rich people. Yes, because they like to still have that sense of like olden days and. I'm just curious. Do they ha- literally have shoe shine boys at the stock exchange? Yeah, I would not be surprised. I can guarantee you there's probably one in Congress right now. It's just like, oh, remember the old days of us being white and slaves and being a thing still? Yeah, the rest of those old shit like that. The good old days and shit. So yeah. Anyway, they robbed the stock exchange and there's a big car change and hey, Batman returns. Get it? Oh my god, the car chase is so boring, TJ. Yeah, and no one else. The bat suit is so is stupid. <laughs> it looks oh, it's ugly. worse. Yeah. It's like, how do you make the worst suit worse than this one? It's I don't so know. bulging and big. Like, what's going on in this movie? I don't know. And then we we get the um introduction to his vehicles. Why does his tire spin on his motorcycle when he turns corners and stuff? Does that does not look like it should work? I don't think it should work, but I think it's quicker that way. Okay. But that thing looks like it should flip over 13 times. It's not yes. believable at all. Yeah. And then he's got a Transformers plane for some reason. I think it's cool. It's the Batwing. <laughs> is it? It's the Batwing. It's not. It looks like a giant block with wings. It's for your fanboys out there. It's the Batwing. That is not from the comics at all. No, because this is a realism of Batman. Not yeah. comic books, no one wants realism in their comic books. If they wanted realism, they read a nonfiction book. I'm sorry. I'm going back to the Batman and Bruce Wayne thing real quick. How many times is Batman? 
Batman and Bruce Wayne have to disappear at the same time for people not to realize that they're both the same? Um, one million. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. People, detectives in this world are just stupid. Or uh, they're either you know why they're stupid because all the real detectives in these world become superheroes. I guess, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that's a, that's a, honestly a good fan theory right there, TJ. <laughs> the lack of good detectives is because everyone else either dies or becomes a main a protagonist. Yeah, I mean that's why all the cops are stupid. Yeah, they're, 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 they're. Let's see, like what's Catwoman's reason to be in this movie, TJ? She needed to steal Bruce Wayne's fingerprints so that they can. That's uh, right. So that they could <laughs> use his fingerprints to take his company away, so that they can, so that when they have their company, they can get to the clean energy machine that they had created, but but not use, so that they can steal the core of it to create a nuclear bomb. No, Catwoman. Why does Catwoman want to be there? She's the one that initiates everything. But why does she need to be there? Like, uh, like why? Like because she's the only one that can steal Bruce Wayne's fingerprints. What's Catwoman's motivation? Like, what is truly her motivation? To get the thing that allows her to wipe her criminal record away from all computers. It's very weak. Very. Actually, weak. I think they stole. There's a there's a um, anime thief one called Lupin the Third. Yes. And I think that's a plot in that somewhere where Probably. there's a there's computer there's a computer. Th- program that can wipe your uh you out of all the systems and stuff so. okay so let's say catwoman does that and gets that management she could stop catwomaning or she's gonna rebuild her record again like what's the point of that she's doing that so she, well no i think she's now that i think about it it's kind of yeah. doesn't make sense but yeah. like the, the explanation they gave is that she's like indebted to like the bane's group and she needs so? it to this so she can disappear so okay, and and this like they're not gonna find her first off, second off. Well, yeah, they're the League of Shadows, but yeah, exactly. But like, if you can, if you don't have, if you wipe your identity and create a whole new one, and they don't know what your identity is, you can, you know, attempt to live a normal life. I guess. Does she want to do that though? Sure, seems like it. That's what she does at the end of this movie with Batman, right? With Bruce Wayne, the most non-normal <laughs> person there is. Well, apparently, he's just a normal person now, too. Again, this movie does a bad job at showing their relationship and, like, you know, them understanding well, each other from being so weird. I don't remember how they get on the rooftop, Batman and Catwoman. Yeah, that fight scene. It's just because they have to be there. So, like, the, they somehow all get They're there. on that rooftop, and I wrote, my two notes for that were, Bat and Cat, awkward, yep. and Bruce Wayne's voice is stupid. Yes. And ever seen that happens where Batman's somewhere and Catwoman has to show up, or vice versa, Catwoman's somewhere and Batman has to show up. They only know they're there because they have to know they're there for the scripts, for the movie purposes. Like, realistically, <laughs> yeah. like, how would you know to be there at this time? And what? Are we well, to on the be, other side to of be town fair, wasn't, I think when they were on the roof, wasn't that the giant, after the giant car chase? They could have just car looked chase. at the news, look on the news and say, oh, hey, look, look at the cop chasing Batman. How are they going to end up there in a time? And you, Well, you, no, you just, you, know. you just follow. <laughs> Sure, sure. It's just anyway, times like not look at it. So, like going back to the car chase, which one? Uh, the very first one after the stock exchange, where they have the hostages and they throw the hostages yeah. away. So for some reason, even though except for the one guy for some reason, yeah. that's stupid. Oh, that, yeah. That's stupid. But like they all continue to go after Batman. Meanwhile, yes. the terrorists. Yes. Yeah. Weird. They right? don't care about the terrorists. I mean, Batman's been going for eight years. Yeah, he killed Harvey Dent. But you know, you think you would want to stop the terrorist who's Doing the things that are trying that just robbed the stock exchange, apparently. Well, because the guy will show everyone that he can get Batman instead of Bruce uh, Jim Gordon and do it. Because Batman came back when a terrorist came back, so he must be connected. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. After all that, Bruce is back home and he's like, Alfred's like, hey, you can't be Batman anymore or I'm leaving. And he's like, you're not going to leave me. Uh, yeah, uh, and I can't stop being, I got to do this because of Rachel from the last movie. And Alfred's like, she didn't even love you anyway. I lied to you. I hate you, I, Alfred. I hate you, Alfred. Now leave. I'm going to leave until the third act. Bye. I wish they didn't reveal, if he did, truly did reveal what there was on that letter. I wish it would have been just in a people's mind for forever. Well, I always took it that he burned the letter because it did say that. <laughs> because <laughs> because the only reason why he continued on in Dark Knight is because he thought that Rachel was choosing him. Well, yeah, do you think he would went on no matter what, though? Even if she didn't want him? I think that would have... 
changed his motivations a little bit. I think he would have still went on to stop Joker and stuff. I think things would have played out a little differently. Okay, this one like Batman. It's like, this guy. I'm sorry. Like, either this interpretation of Batman or just Batman in general. Like, he's that moody and swayed easily. That he either no, that, that's going. that's this interpretation okay, of Batman. Okay, because like, this, that's a f***ing bullshit thing right there. Like, really? Like, the whole Rachel thing was stupid anyway. I know. I know. I remember being angry about that. I mean, and then we get then we get the reveal of the Bruce and Talia. I know she's called something else at this point for her. She's Talia. Yeah, had idea. developed a clean reactor energy thing. Yes, they made it. And then some scientists released a, a letter or a report saying he could turn that core into a nuclear fusion bomb or some shit like that. Right. And so Bruce said, put it on Mothlaws and said, nope. Can't do it until we make it safe. What? Why? Any, you could use the same raw materials to make a bomb. Um, you can turn anything into a weapon. This thing can exactly. create clean energy, and you're not going to do it just because somebody can make a bomb out of it? Right, then why do anything? Yeah, exactly. Then why create anything good? It's like, no, oh, no, we, we can't create televisions because someone can turn a television into a bomb now. Right. Or can we use that television to spread misinformation and bad news? No, you, it's it's more good uses out of bad uses in this thing. Like literally, it's the dumbest reason to not use something I've ever heard. Freaking yep. Tony Stark in the in the Avengers movie was using clean energy. <laughs> exactly. He he Honestly. had this, he had this giant reactor. No one's stopping him. God, that brings to us too many real world things. Like this, just like ups- upsets me, TJ. That's too real for current, current, or just our, our rhyme in general. Like, yeah, there's good uses, and now there's just downsides to it. Just monitor it heavily. Whatever. Am I getting that rabbit hole? Whatever. It's 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 a dumb it's a dumb reason for. Is that the strong argument, right? Well, it's yeah. It it's it's an excuse to not do something. That's what yes. it is. Yeah, the straw man, right? That's what that refers to. Yeah, kind of. Anyway, moving on. So Bruce lost all of his money because they used fraud to put his thing in the middle of a stock. Why would they even make those bets something in the stock exchange while it was being robbed? They know they were uploading something. Right. I don't know. This is it, no, it's it's stupid. Anyway, he loses his company. He loses everything. But he gets Talia in charge of the board. And the... The red hair and bad guy dag it. It's like, ooh, yeah, but I don't have the company. Tally took him. Bane's like, ha ha, that was the plan all along. And Daggett, when he goes to kill this Daggett guy, he's like, all of a sudden, you're pure evil. What are you? What do you mean? He's a guy. Like, that whole scene was stupid. All of a sudden, Bane's this evil monster. No, he just manip- out manipulated you. Yeah, that's all that is. They found in their portrayal of Bane. Yes, yes, TJ, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know... They have a trail of a lot of things in this movie, TJ. Yeah. And then, you know, as, you know, Commissioner Gordon finds... Is in the tunnels, and he gets kidnapped and beat up, and then he's in a hospital. Meanwhile, cop Gordon Levitt finds some things out. And hey, look, now he's a detective for some reason because he figured some things out. Because we need him to be a detective, because get it? You get it? And then, it's like, this movie's coming to an end of the end of the series, and it's trying to damn this to pass the mantle in every sense of magic all these other characters, and just fails every time. It's trying to put, tie up every storyline, every Batman storyline ever, so they don't have yes. to do another one. No, but they're, trying, so they're still trying to, like, open up new pages. Like, hey, if you guys, someone else wants to do it, they can do it. Yeah, so, I know. Nah. No one wants Gordon Joseph Levitt as Batman. No. Maybe a Batwing. Maybe not Batman. Maybe as a... What was that guy? What's that? Darkwing? No. Nightwing. Nightwing. Dark. Not Darkwing Duck. Yeah, no. No, no, I would, I would, I would have seen that. And then you know, he Bruce sleeps with Talia. That's where I, that's the note where I was saying they were rushing all the romance. Yes. So he's he sleeps with Talia, but he but he's he got, has a meeting with Catwoman because she's gonna lead him to Bane. How does Catwoman know where Bane is? Exactly. Why does he think she knows where he is? His only experience up to this point was her stealing stuff and a dance at a charity ball. Exactly. That's why like I've been so confused by her because again, take her out of this. This is good. This is whatever. Yeah, I know. It just none of that makes any sense. Why would she know anything? They had to give her something to do. All right, so. She takes him to Bane, and then we get the big moment, you know, where Bane breaks the bat. 
he like what would make first? Goodbye. He beats him up. Yeah. He he beats him up. He breaks his back. He get, get the fame in line, the spirit over the body, you know. And we rewatch this scene. I'm looking at it, and the physical on the ground action is just not good. No. Nothing doesn't seem like it hits. No. Nope. Everything feels fake. Even the gunfire in this feels like nothing's shooting. Oh, nothing's hitting. Yeah. I felt that when I first saw this movie. 10 years ago, 20 years ago now, however long it's been. And I felt that now. Like, the gunfire alone just feels so theatrical and just, like, movie props. From if, this scene, every scene in this movie, the gun props are bad. The fight scene, like you just said, like, maybe because the animation spoils us or whatever, but, like, it's not. It's not hitting. It's not. No, you know, no nothing seems to hit in it. No. It feels like they're playing Batman yes. and Bane. This movie feels like a theatrical play of what like should Like, at been. the end, when we get the giant oh, giant scene where everything's it. coming together, it feels, it. it feels, I literally wrote in my notes, cops and robbers. Yes. Because that's what it like, feels like, they're playing cops and robbers. Because the, pro- the problem is, though, like, that scene, when we get to it, they can only secure two blocks of the city, because they've shot in a real city. So they can secure two blocks of it. They didn't know how to make it look bigger for some reason, even though they have all the budget in the world and the best cameras and director, apparently. And it just looks bad. It looks very staged and bad. Um, yeah, I think this fight scene right here and any fight scene with Batman versus Bane would have been better with a bigger actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's so more opposing to Batman, so that's the same height, maybe an inch or two difference. This is pathetic. It did. It felt like almost like a, a ex- exhibition boxing match yes. a little bit. <laughs> exactly what it felt like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me that big steroid bound mon- muscle monster that's going to destroy Batman in a fight. That's what I want to see. Not this. I want to see The Rock a few <laughs> times bigger and fighting this guy. The yeah, hound. Some- give me the hounds. Something. It just didn't work. No. Anyway, so he breaks Batman's back, and that's pretty much the end of the second act. Now, you know. Because he goes and he puts him in the pit, which I'm not that even going to... Fir- that should be the end of the first part of the first uh, the first one of the two-part ending series. Yeah, I, I, like, I'm not even going into the comic book lore and everything because it's just yeah. so bad. Yeah. Oh, and so, yeah. So they put Batman in a pit. In the pit. You know, it's the, the famous pit that Bane escapes from and... In Santa Prisca uh, and alle- stuff like allegedly. that. Allegedly. Allegedly in this movie. Anyway. Yeah, allegedly, okay. So, but, like, it makes sense... To a certain degree, this is a, a shitty place that people put things like that's why Rachel School's wife gets put in there, so forth. So forth. it makes sense; it's corrupt and stuff. Yes. Why do they put Catwoman? Because they catch Catwoman and they put her in a men's jail. Yes. They say some bullcrap, make some bullcrap excuse, but no. Why would you do that? Because to show that she's tough. Yeah, but that's <laughs> you wouldn't do it exactly. It doesn't. No. The logic in this movie's not there. It's the rule of cool, TJ. Wouldn't it be cool to see a female who looks timid, be able to beat down a big guy in a jail? But, sir, it's cool looking, let's do it. Sure, okay, sir. That only, honest, work, that only works in D&D. Cool. I know. Something I want to say about this pit. I don't recall. Oh, they talk about how Bane's idea, they did uh, explain the, uh, Bane's, is that a third act reveal? Is that the second act? His, uh, I guess his third act, right? Second act, third act. I don't know what, 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 what reveal we're talking about. There's like three reveals for Bane. Bane's like, my plan for the city is to take it over in chaos and anarchy shit. No, that's that's right now at the, okay. the pit. He's like, I, I want you to watch as your city burns. That's why I'm not killing you, essentially. Okay, gotcha. And then he gives him permission to die once the city's burned. And then, you know, you got, I wrote, oh, okay. I don't know what that word is, though. Say it. Read a sentence. I can edit this out. Stat or star? Smugly? Oh, just um, have your notes into your phone for that one. Star Spangled Banner. That's it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> wow. I'm watching, scene, I'm watching a scene right now. That's what I know. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So, now, you, <laughs> yeah. Th- this this is, that's exactly what Star Spangled I wrote. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so, now you get the the scene in all the advertisements with the football field. Yeah. Uh, so, Baines apparently set bombs all over the place. No, well, technically, he laced concrete with explosives. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but it sounds stupid. And explosions happen all around the city, and he blows up all the bridges. And So, consciously, I just realized, why well, I don't like this movie, TJ. Why is that? The people of color are lacking in this movie. So, that's the one random military guy who's black, and it's just Fox. The only other black people in this movie are football players, and they all just get killed on the screen. I guess it's very a white movie. It is. So taking I mean, out Blaine Bane, who's supposed to be Hispanic, kind of f***ed up, but whatever. I mean, Talia is a woman of color, but... What color is she? She's brown. Is she brown? Yeah. In the movie, in the show, or in the, in the uh, comics? Yeah, she's... In, in the comics, she's brown, too. Yeah, she's, um... Technically, Raish and they're Talia are... They are more... I want to say... Arabic. 
That that one, yeah. I want to say, but, I, these but, movies but they, they but technically, Grace even predates that. Yeah, but he's like from that point of the part of the world, essentially. Least. I mean, he's obviously not Arabic or anything like that. I mean, as yeah. far as religion or cultural sense goes he's just like from that part of the world because that's you know where the origins of the world started yeah yeah the, the, bar- the browner areas yes so yeah. so but yeah so talia is a woman of color so she's also made by what like, i mean actress. to be fair though in the in the comics she's drawn whiter of course you know so she's she you can easily misplace her as white oh, no. this movie just felt very white and so, like, oh, I, did, I, did, f- I, did, I didn't hate it because of that, but, like, I'm looking at this movie now, I'm like, oh, I guess it's, it's kind of a white movie. Well, yeah, I didn't like, notice that going in, like, seeing, like, all the make British actors kind of, it's, it's movie's f***ing white. Yeah, no, it is, it is, but, it's you know, so is, so is something like Thor. Yes. Well, the first one, which one? The first one, Thor, that has all the British actors. There, but he's got brown friends. The movie is lacking, for sure. He's got yeah. an Asian friend. And- so, like, so is Avengers. It's, well, it's got Samuel L. Jackson, but... He's a strong working character, but you know, there's just one of him. Yeah. But so eventually, I, eventually we get a Warhammer and uh, We did have a Warha- Warhammer and Iron Man. Yeah, we, and uh, two different ones. It. Two different Warhammers. <laughs> These movies lack diversity. That's all. Yeah. I'm not just saying to be like woke or anything. It's just like sometimes you just notice that kind of shit. No, you're not wrong. I'm trying to think what the first one is. I guess technically, no. I was thinking Diana would be the first because of Gal Gadot, uh, Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot Diana. is Isra- Israeli. We, like, we need to talk about like first uh, like uh, color, starring. person of color in one of these movies, like starring. Oh, like the lead role. Yes. It would either be her, but she's white passing, so you won't count that. Like, I mean, yeah, that's Twitter what I mean. That I mean, or technic- Black Panther. Like, that's how far it took, like, TJ. Like, like you can t- I guess technically count Diana. I mean, she's from an island in Greece, essentially. Yes. So, but, like, that doesn't really count because Greece is more of a... Oh, a white nation, yeah, but I um, but got to go herself is re- Israeli, yes. so and she, that's awesome. That's 2017 ish, I give or take. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, I might have the device right here. Wonder Woman came out, Wonder 2017. Oh, yeah, I, I know that it came out. I'm just trying to think, was, was it her the first one? Oh, we, we did Blade and all that shit too. Don't forget, I'm talking about uh, the, the modern movies, oh, like, modern? probably her or Black Panther. Black Panther was 2018, so yeah, I'm thinking of the modern movies. Like, I mean, we can go we go back to Steel if we really wanted to, exactly, exactly. But the modern, modern representation, yeah, uh, the, the, you know, when so. superheroes became big, yes, even then, like again, the splitting hair, she's white passing, so people were like, it's okay, unless she does have a heavy accent. Um, but the first, like, black, black ones, either Black Panther or what, Spider Verse, I guess. I, I don't, I wasn't really gonna count, um, animated movies because it's not real, yeah. I mean, you, it's not real representation. You, yeah. for all you no. know, you have you have a white yeah. person, <laughs> I, it's a black actor playing Spider Verse and Spider Verse, so it's good, the movie's good, but I guess Black Panther, that's why the movie was again, was such a phenomenon. I'm trying to get to the marvelous, okay. marvelous to look. I didn't mean to do this, I'm just watching the movie, the black, no, the no, it's, that's 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 fine. Fine, it's a good point. Yeah, I was because I, I was watching the football scene and they're panning the audience. Like, there's not a single person of color in the audience, and usually in a football game, there's lots of people of color. I mean, it depends like, on whether it feels fucked. It depends on whether or not you want to count like some somebody like Storm from the X Men stuff who was mishandled and misused. Yeah, no, that, still, you know, still a star and role, star and role. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. But that's also a ensemble movie. Yep. Like technically, I guess you could count something like Guardians of the Galaxy, who has because is it? Um, and she's green face, yeah. Zo- uh, is it Zoe? Yeah, Zoe. Not Dashnell. No. So that so 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 And then the terrible Fantastic Four movie had a black. <laughs> Exactly, which is, I guess, another ensemble. Yeah, right? um, it's kind of fucked yeah. up, right? Yeah, and then Black Panther is the only one that I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Why is fuck? Why is the movie so popular? That's why it's popular, people. Even looking past that, I'm not seeing Shang Chi again. 2020, 2022, 21. Yeah, I don't know who's in the Eternals, so maybe there's a few in there. That's an ensemble of uh, Neil's uh, air, uh, Middle Eastern, one of his areas, and other people. Yeah. Yeah, there's not, there's not a lot. Let's I say know, that. I know. That's why it's a common criticism. I get it. And again, I'm not saying it just to make a point or statement. I'm saying this, this movie is very white. It is. Very now, white. will adding people of color make this movie better? No. No, no. The movie's bad. It's very mediocre, this movie. <laughs> it I, I was just saying it probably more enjoyable visually for me. Like, oh, people of color who aren't either obviously bad or which is Fox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know. So, yeah. The bombs everywhere. Things blowing up. They blow up a football field for some reason. 
They yeah, also I blow, I blow that up. I, I get the cameras are there, so they get attention. I, I, I because it's nice. because it's cool. <laughs> Uh, right. Anyway, but meanwhile, all of that was happening. The cops are down in the tunnels. Oh, looking for them. They, every cop in Gotham went down into the tunnels, except for like two. And because of the bombs went off, they're all trapped in the bottom of the thing. See, I'm not a cop lover or anything by any means. I don't. I don't hate hate cops, but like they make cops look so foolishly stupid in this f-ing movie that irks me, TJ. Like, well, like you think they'd be tactical and smart? Like, why would every cop go into those tunnels? Like, what sense yeah, and, is that? And make? they use an ex- they use the excuse training exercise, like they use when militaries. That's fine. Ma- well, you make the say- whole military in one area. I know, but I'm just saying that's what There's they tactical s- ways of doing this stuff. It is stupid. It's like why well, uh, Gotham's tunnels that large that you need to send every cop in the city down there. And um, what about what about the rest of the city? Isn't there other crimes happening? Yeah, right. Like what about the me- you know even just crimes, but like emergencies where you need a cop. Like hey, yeah, medical shit going on over here. Help us do things. No, okay. How about just you know like instead of going into the tunnels, just block the tunnels. Like look at the go at the entrances and you, there's, there's ways to. Look we're going into the tunnels. It's stupid. Anyway, so after all that happens, Bane you know, does his ultimatum. You know, I got a bomb. No one's coming in. Blah, 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 blah. Then the next day, he reads Gordon's letter of lies that he just happened to have on him when Gordon got kidnapped. So he reads that to everyone saying, hey, Harvey Dent was a murderer. Blah, 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 blah. Batman didn't kill anybody. But now we're going to release all of the Blackgate prisons prisoners because I need soldiers. I don't know. I and, hate this so much because the and, idea of like just like, like Harvey's death cured crime like oh his death was bullshit crime starts again anarchy like what yeah I don't know anyway that's why she, uh, Catwoman was in Blackgate so she could be freed by Bane <laughs> And what's his what's his plan of doing all this? I know he said the hand the, the powers back in your hand, people, but like I don't get it. Is it just to cause chaos and anarchy, aka what the Joker did? Like, is that what he's trying to just do? I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so like, like, Bane, what, like I, sorry, I'm sorry. Go back to Bane in the comics. Like, what does Bane need to do in the comics? Depends. He's got all kinds of different plans. Is it always this outlandish? Or stu- like not outlandish, but is it always like, like this kind of level, or is it like no, he's part no, of I a- mean, he does take over Gotham at one point and different ways though okay like he took over gotham and um i forget why no one else was coming to help in the city but there was a reason but the superheroes had to leave the city because he had alfred hostage and if anyone comes in he threatened to kill alfred okay. well everyone cares that's, who cares that's that's, like, that's, like, that's why Batman. Being- that's why Batman and all the Bat people stayed away because he had alfred TJ, really? and then robin's like screwed out i'm going in to stop him and he went in and then got his ass kicked and then Bane breaks Alfred's neck in front of Robin. But like, and, and now he's got Robin as a cap. As a, who cares? For the greater good of the society. There was, a, there, was, there was other reasons why other people were coming in. But that's the reason why. Like that was one of the reasons why the Bat family couldn't go in because they had they had, he had hostage. hostage. But there was like, like they had super villains as cops and stuff. I don't remember what the deal was. Yeah, there's got to be a better deal then. Don't come here and we'll kill your butler. Like, I love Alfred. Don't be wrong, but Alfred, like... well, you know, but that's what, that's why the Bat family stayed away. Because, you know, they were like, that's their dad. You there know? has to be more than that, though. I'm willing to well, sacrifice I'm... a loved one to help the rest of the yeah, city. Wait, which this I, is, which again... I, which I put the duty on to swear, I swore to protect the city out of my own f-ing crazy mindset to stop going to therapy. Again. I will sacrifice one loved one to save this city. Again, right? again, that's you. And you're putting your Batman's own what you do. Oh, Batman was hurt or something at the time. Oh my god, Batman like was. That's why the Bat family in general sucks. Like you go put the mantle on to protect the overall city, but oh no, the Butler. Oh, oh Jesus! Like Bat- oh, Batman, bitches. Batman himself was seriously hurt and out of action. It was the rest of the Bat family that wouldn't go in. Posers, whatever. But like Bruce was hurt because I remember him recovering on a beach with Cap. Stop it! You're making me angry, TJ. You're making me not like Batman even more. Like this is the story was actually really good. I just don't (laughs) remember it because it was like four years ago now. (laughs) And ever since then, Joker has taken over the city, and then been the thirty other things that's happened. But that whole run, that whole run of Batman where Bane takes over from like that whole run from those writers were really good. Okay, I believe I definitely believe you, but it's just what you're telling me right now. I'm not. I'm not. 
it's, you're not, you're it's, not giving it's, it justice. I'm not giving it justice, and it is ridiculous on its face. Yes, but yes, like, yes, yes, you got to stop putting what you would do on people because what no, you would do is not, not what everyone would do, else. Because we're not doing. We're not doing another Batman debate. But it's just like you're going to swear to protect the city because you put on this. You put this again. Control. You did all of this bullshit, but again, I can't go in and save it because the one guy I like again the butlers. Batman the was hurt. I know, but I'm saying even the other Bat family. The other Bat family like never made that vow. So why are they wearing the fucking outfits then? They 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 have their own outfits. They're yeah. Robins. They're Nightwings. They're posers. They're they're but they're but, help- but they're still there to help the city, right? It's all still there. They're they're like, helping Batman fight. help the city. They didn't. They don't have this vengeance thing. That that's why mm-hmm. Batman is such is known mm-hmm. as the dark brooding mm-hmm. idiot because the rest of the family isn't like that. You don't hear them, anyone saying that about Nightwing or nothing. They all could have just sit down for a day or two and like make it devise a strong, good plan and get Alfred out. And it wasn't just it just wasn't Bane. He had the whole city. Like the supervillains were running rampant. I get that, but like no one knows your identity. So just walk around as plain Janes, right? And just get as close as possible as you guys can. To and Wayne Manor, just, yeah. the most secure place in Gotham. Wayne Manor is taking over by Bane, right? Yes. Well, the Wayne Manor, the place these all these bat family you know the ins and out of more so right. than Bane. So, I so here's the thing: Bane had teamed. This is going to sound ridiculous. Because <laughs> it is ridiculous. It's making me angry. Bane had teamed up with an alternate reality Thomas Wayne from. Oh no! Flash- I wonder. This is from stupid. Okay. from the flash from the flashpoint paradox. So they gotcha. know who they knew who t- who they knew who Batman was. Gotcha. So uh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> the second you say alternate reality, it makes total sense. Okay, back well, so- to the movie. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's I have no more arguments of... now. <laughs> I generally don't. The second you add that layer of fantasy, like, okay, I got it. <laughs> okay. No, I know the trick. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that, really, <laughs> that turned on all of my anger. Like, okay, I accept it. Whatever. It's fantastical. It's good to know. All right. So, whew. <laughs> I don't remember where we are. Bane takes uh, over. Bane takes over. I wrote Red Hair. Oh, Red Heron. That's right. Because now we cut over to the pit where Bruce Wayne recovering and stuff mm. down, down in there. And they explain that to him that Bane is in the League of Shadows and he was a kid. But we already knew all this information. Yeah, it's just added to the wrong time. Yeah, Al- the Alfred and, like already looked into all this and I stuff. Know. It's Ugh. like, why are we re-explaining this? And it's not even true. Why are you re-explaining false information to us? Maybe Exactly. Maybe that's why I like, I think this movie should have been two parts. Maybe that was part of the two parter idea. If there was if there was an idea for this, first part do that. Second part they do this part now. In the second part, and they like reestablish what they told us in the first movie, just in case we didn't see. I mean, granted, the movie's so long that you need to be refreshed yes. on some things. But it's <laughs> re-nudging. I was like, remember this? Remember this? What we told you earlier? Yeah. But it's like we already you know, know that. how they escape. Like when they're wearing the rope, jump from one side to the other side, and they fall. There's no way they're not doing damage to their spines. All right, hold on. Well, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Because, <laughs> but first, Batman's back's broken and they have to fix it. And mm-hmm. they put him, they put him like in this rope swing. Yeah. For four months or some shit like that. Yep. And and his back just heals. That I don't think backs heal that way. Not at all. But whatever, he heals within like it says four months. It's I'm right. looking at the the plot in front of me. So apparently, his the whole. That whole thing happens. Oh no! I'm sorry. Five months. Five months. Yeah. So, meanwhile, we kept back and forth between um, Batman in the pit and then stuff happening in Gotham. I'm trying to read my notes. Um, pit, Gotham, Bane, Robin is detecting Gordon. No, yeah, these no, characters were like they, they I know these characters. They all do nothing. Wall Street's taking over. Which for Killian Murphy as the uh, scare, as Scarecrow. No, no, no. I'm I'm in the pit. I'm just reading. I got a bunch of notes here that I'm reading at once. Okay. So he's in his pet. The he his back's healed, and in order to get out of the pit, you have to climb out of it. Why? First of all, why does a prison allow you to a chance to escape? Right? Because you think like how, that's guy been there for forever, right? You think yeah. these guys would have just figured let's all get together and just build a big ass ladder or something, right? Like, because that pit seems super easy to get out of if you truly put your shit together. So then you climb up. You know, you could tie a rope to yourself to a ledge, and then you have to jump to another ledge in order to get to it. Mm-hmm. 
And they're like, and of course, Bruce fouls a couple of times before he, he succeeds. But when he fouls, he said, yeah, see, you weren't born in darkness. You were too privileged in order. And that's why you can't make it. What does that have to do with your physical Love ability it. to jump over from one ledge to another? All what does stuff. what does tying a rope to yourself instead of not tying a rope to yourself make a difference from how far you can jump? I, I guess the rope is the safety thing. So you feel comfortable, like, relaxing a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Why? Why do they stand at the edge of this little cliff thing instead of walking back the four steps and go for a run and jump and that uh-huh. way you can get further lead? Le- None of this makes any sense. It's just bullshit platitudes. You know, yep. you need this in order to dig this stupid uh-huh. metaphorical jump. And when he finally makes it, why all of a sudden on this one do bats just fly out from uh, of the pit all of a sudden up close to where the sun is? It's all rule of cool, and it's just trying to spoon feed stupidity to us. It's not. It's not a good movie. It's not smart. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah, and you know, so there's also. I just want the the sec Gordon second in command, not Gordon Levitt, the other cop in oh, this. Yeah. So I take it he's a Harvey Bullock stand-in. I don't know why they didn't just put Harvey Bullock in it. Harvey Bullock. Um, he's the Jim Gordon's partner in the comics and stuff. Like major character in Batman lore. We've seen him in a yes. Yeah, we've seen him a few times in a few Batman things. Yeah. But I just don't know why they use this Foley guy instead of just hey yeah. this is Harvey Bullock. It makes no sense. Whatever. That's just a side note that I wrote I must have wrote it on a side <laughs> when I remembered it. So but then, you know, in Gotham, Crane is judging people and to exile and death where you get no matter what you choose, you have to walk across a frozen lake. Like, and I guess if you fall in the frozen lake, you die. Which no, but sure, whatever. Was yeah, sure. Um, that's that's what I was like. I don't think it works that way. I think you can still swim and survive. Yeah, I know the water is not that cold. First off, and if it is, sure. But you, I mean, you still even if it, it is, yeah, you still just got time. climb out of it. Sure, you, got, you yeah. might get hypothermia or something. Why, but you, like, like why walk? If you know you're gonna have to go across this this lake river thing, why not just crawl across to have a better surface area crawl for this? Like, why are you walking? And, yeah, and another thing that I don't understand is: do all the holes freeze over immediately after someone falls in? Because every time they go back on the ice, there's no holes where people. Yeah, fall in. like you shouldn't be able to by this point know a, which way to walk. And apparently, this has been done a thousand times at this exactly. point. Exactly. And this is just to get ju- crane in this movie is yeah. that what this is this whole thing is yes yes and so you know that's happening and we get a bunch of stuff with them trying to figure out how to disable the bomb special forces sneak in they get murdered it's all did, going did bad you the bomb yet? yeah we talked about the bomb where they use the um the we were, we were complaining about the yeah but did we talk about him actually using it as leverage now? No, I kind of skipped over it, but he's yeah, oh, okay. he's he's, got he's using the core <laughs> of the atom bomb that we talk about as leverage to keep everybody out. Who cares? Like, 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 like this again. This is just a me thing, I guess. Like, how is everyone like just sitting by, like in the city, like yeah, we're okay with this? There's a bomb driving by us our house every day. Like, I don't know. I mean. I mean, they kill you if you try to do something. I, I, I seriously, generally would rather die than just sit there. Yeah, waiting. but again, it's my non- I know, you, I know, you I know. Didn't it's a take paper. you out of I it. know. I just cannot fathom having this tyrannical. I know it speaks levels to the world as it is, but just have this tyrannical maniac. Tyrannical. Uh, yeah, tyrannical maniac and his people. Oh, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy. And it's crazy. a lot of people are relishing in this, this lawlessness, this, this, this stuff. And that like makes that. no sense to me either. The only people that should be relishing are people who are truly crazy and the people they let out of jail. Besides that, I would I'm willing to bet there's more sane people out there than the ones. Yeah, well, I'm this. assuming the sane people are just staying in their houses and out of out of the way. That's fing crazy. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. It's just crazy. I mean, they can't get out. What are they gonna do? Just I don't that's just like I don't if know. If they have like, families and stuff, what are they gonna put their families at risk? Because y- yes. Yes, yes, because that's the right thing to do, right? Like that's the right thing to do. Oh, I, we're. Good, I, I, good. I know, I know, I know. Trust me, I know, I know, teacher. I know, I know, I, I, I know. I know. I'm being crazy right now. I know. Okay. I just, I just can't. That's why I just can't like bad them being under Kim Jong Un and like people like that in the world. Just like, well, those people were born into that, so they were raised and brainwashed into exactly. that. Exactly. So that makes more sense. Like, this is a hostile takeover. People are just, like, sitting by and letting it happen. I mean, there's enough crazy people and enough criminal people and enough anarchists that th- this could work easily. I, I think my problem with it is that this movie doesn't betray well enough. That's all. 
that's fair. But this movie doesn't portray anything well. Exactly. So. That's why I just can't buy it. It just feels crazy. But yeah, I guess. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And like, I'm trying to think if this happened in real life, if, you know. People would. If, people would definitely. People are ready as is. No, no, no. Like, I'm, I'm just wondering how the government would react. You know what I mean? Would they just let this happen? It depends on who's controlling the government at the time. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Some motherfuckers would nuke the city and call it a day. Some people would try their best to be pacifists and work with it. But, like, because Bane has a nuclear bomb, right? That's the whole yes. thing. It's an atom bomb. I don't think the government really could. They can't call his bluff. At that point, he's just nuke the city. No, but that's at, that, that's at that's that point, at that point, you they do what they do in other countries, they get a good beat on where he is, and then they just bomb the shit out of it. And take some casualties. But even then, like, he's but he's got that thing in his back pocket. A random civilian's got the, the trigger. That's true, but that's not even true. But oh, we know that. Yeah, and we don't know that. True. Yes, the government at the, in this world, they, they don't know. So, like, so he's got a good plan, Bane, and, or Rob, whoever, ta- whoever you want to say he's got a plan. It's a solid plan. Kind of. Yeah. Like, I, you know, it's a of, little man. convoluted to get there, though. It is, but like you think like, there, like I, here's here's my here's my whole thing. Yeah, there are. Oh, he has a nuclear physicist. Just have him build you a bomb. Nuclear physicist. Who's nuclear physicist? The guy who armed the bomb in the first place. The guy that kidnapped at the very beginning. Of the and movie. he killed. He killed him. Yeah, I know. Have him build you a bomb instead of trying to take over Wayne Enterprises to get a bomb. You don't. You can cut out half that thing. Say, hey, dude, build me a nuclear bomb, or I'm going to kill you, and then take the bomb with you to Gotham. Now, that being said, the bomb he already built the first time is already a bomb. Whereas, guy, build me a bomb, I'm going to kill you. The guy could be thinking, I'm going to build this bomb crappily so it won't go off ever. This well, guy here's the thing. The bomb but here's the bomb thing. Works. If you build a bomb as a bomb, there's no way you can use that bomb to deactivate itself because it was originally a part of a nuclear reactor. Wait, say, say, say that sentence again. If you build a bomb as a bomb, yes. it's always a bomb. Yes. No. Whereas. Yes. But. Whereas. Whereas this wasn't always a bomb, so yes. if you put it back to with its original yes. purpose, you disarm it, which means you have a chance for someone to come and put it back and yes. and disarm it. But what I'm saying is, me as nuclear f- as physicist and you as Bane, you come to me saying, Marcus, you're gonna kill. I'm gonna kill you. Don't build me a bomb. Sure, TJ, I'll build you a bomb. Now I'm, I'm thinking in my back pocket. This guy has no idea what this bomb works, but the inners of how this bomb works. So I'll build you a shell with some shit in there that could be possibly a bomb. No, well, you might kill me, you might not. But either way, I'm giving you a shell that's not going to explode ever. Well, that's the that, gamble right there. So if I, if I, if I was Bane <laughs> and I had that intelligence level, I would say, build me a bomb. All right, you build it. Now we're going to test it, and it's going to work. I mean, you're going to kill and me, then we're going to work, and then no, we don't kill you. Then we torture you until you do it right. Me being me, I am never, ever going to build that bomb for you. All right, then. I will okay. build the same thing over and over okay, and over Okay, then we again. bring in your sister, then your mother. Whatever, whatever. Your dog. So I have no idea, because you know what you're doing right now? You're killing the people I like. So by the time you come oh, no. like, who said anything? Them, who, who said anything about killing them? Whatever you're doing to them. I'm just saying. These are things people I like. So, you, okay, now you got them ready. So, I'm definitely not building a bomb now. So, they, we're going to go blow them up. Oh, we already got them. Like, me being a stubborn asshole, I'm never going to, like, bend my that's, knee back. That that's fair. Shit. But then they keep doing it. And then, I okay. Know. They'll get to the scientists they, and go to bed day. Till, till they, till they, and if it doesn't work out, man. Okay, you're not the only nuclear physicist in yes. the world. And I know that going in, but, like, I did the best I could. Hopefully. Again, but you, you think that me. way. That's I know, just I know. you. <laughs> I know. And this is me thinking this way, not in pain. The second I get in pain, okay, I'll do whatever you want to hurt me. Don't yeah, hurt. exactly. Who knows? Who knows? But in my mind, I'm a strong will son of a bitch. <laughs> the moment they start putting hot pokers under your fingernails. Yeah, but I, I, again, maybe like I'm thinking like, yeah, this shit's painful and terrible and torture's awful, obviously. I don't want to get waterboarded or anything, but the end result's both a bomb they're going to use to kill people and or me. Like, yeah, but if you're constantly in constant pain that never stops, that affects a mind. It does. It does. I, I get that. And I know I'm not strong enough to get like they say. Torture, they so. say torture doesn't work, not because people don't admit things, it's because eventually they'll tell you whatever you want to hear in exactly. order to, for it to stop. So I don't know. But, you know, a little jerk want me to build. I'm not going to build it the right way. I'm going to Death Star. I'm going to make sure there's a way to not have this thing go off. That's all. 
All right. Well, we were flying. we're at the point where Batman's healed, so Batman returns again. Get it? Get it? And now this is the big climax. Batman's back. They free all the cops from the their tunnel cells. Oh, well, 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 he forgot the big Batman Daredevil sign. Oh, right. He he returns. <laughs> he saves. He saves <laughs> Jim. Cool. Every I, you know, it's the big moment where everything's falling apart. Jim Gordon's being forced across the lake. Uh, Cop Levitt is about to be killed by. Bean people, you know, everything's going badly. And then Batman returns with a daredevil sign, as Marcus said. It doesn't even look like a bat. It looked like a, an ink splatter on the bridge. Yes. No, it's not on the ground. It's on the side of a building, isn't it? It's on the side of a bridge. Oh, a building. Wherever it's at, how? It's why? on the how side of... It's on, like, a tower of the bridge. Rewatch it. I'm watching... Oh, it is the bridge. Okay, I thought it was on the skyscraper. Why? How? How and why, TJ? He took the time to why? do that. 15 minutes. Because, There's a bomb going around. Because he had to wait until they got Gordon out here. He's like, oh, man, I got out here a half hour early. <laughs> like, like, like... <laughs> So it's the fundamentals of like get like how no you know what's even worse there's a bad not, signal goddamn not that he did it that, it's already weird enough to did it but he left the flare <laughs> so that Gordon could light it oh he did this for flare for a dramatic effect. Dumbest. It's just pure dramatic theatrical stupidity. But it's cool, there's, Marcus. There's, there's a bat signal, right? He just to put that on. Like, like he doesn't want to use it. He wants the light to bring fire. It hurts my brain how that works. It makes no sense. So yeah, that happens for reasons. All right, and then it's the big climax. You know, everybody comes together. You, they get all the cops out of it. So now all the cops are fighting all the robbers. Batman's this is the big New York moment we were talking about over like in Spider-Man is that you know there's that big everybody this is this is this version where all the cops are like yeah we're gonna you know we're the heroes here it, it's so corny and lame and it's so bad because they have all the cops who were in the sewers for months at this time still in the same cop uniform so they're probably smelling motherfuckers probably malnourished whatever from sunlight whatever sure whatever all that like that they all run towards the robbers who have guns they're shooting at the cops. Like this, again, there's no tactics, there's no planning things out. Like this. Just run at him, guys, head on. Yeah, like, and then, I mean, Batman's there in his plane, and then for some reason gets yeah. out of his plane yeah. and with the giant guns yes. in it and gets on the ground and starts fighting Bane. Meanwhile, Gordon Levitt goes to get his orphanage kids out of the city oh. because he can't. Catwoman's blowing up tunnels that apparently can just blow up and it, that's no one's thought of doing that before. Okay. But so Such everyone's doing their oh, and Gordon's you know trying to stop the bomb and, and stuff. why is why is Bane surprised? Like why is this like make Bane weak all of a sudden? Like you should be dead. Like so fight him again. You kill you did it the first time. Yeah, but he's he's Batman now. He just got back the first time. He was overconfident and angry. Now he's overcome all of that because he jumped out of a pit. The guy's back's broken for one time. Like I'm pretty sure he still he's got that. Like come on, come on. Anyway, so yeah, he's. Everyone's fighting. Batman beats Bane. He gets in there. He's about to say, he does, where's the bomb? You know, that stupid voice. And then he's like about to do it. And then, oh no, Talia Ghoul stabs him in the side because she was the bad guy the whole time. And she was the one that was in the pit that escaped. And Bane was her protector and helped her. And I don't know, maybe they were a thing or an item. I, I can't tell. I don't know if it was just a relationship or like a mentor or bodyguard thing. It doesn't no seem like it. It doesn't matter. But all of a sudden, Tally is the bad guy, and Bane's nothing more but a henchman. And I think he does. Catwoman comes. So Tally stabs Bruce, and they're like, aha, now I'm going to finish what my dad started. Because even though I hated him, you killed him. So now I don't hate him anymore. It's so dumb. It's so bad, TJ. Yeah. Like, we're doing oh. the first movie all over again. Like, I don't want to see this again. Yeah, I know. But I also forgot uh, Liam Neeson's one scene was when Bruce was hallucinating <sighs> down in. The pit. So, but yeah, yeah so. Bane's gonna yeah. fight Batman because. Bane's gonna fight Batman and then the cat, Catwoman comes in and shoots him with the motorcycle gun it's that okay. she has. And I guess he's dead here because he's yeah. done after this, right? Yep. You would we'll never see him again after that. I guess that's it. What a, what a shitty way to put the character out. This big uh, menacing character of this whole movie. Like, oh, it's plot twist. He's dead. Like, what? What? This is also where I wrote nothing hits and anything like that. You know, it's, again, it looks like a theater play. And so, yeah, you know, a bunch of bull crap happens. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, like, they get the, they have the bomb, they have to get it back to the thing, but Talia hit the button that causes it to flood because Bruce is a paranoid idiot and 
put the reactor in a place where it can flood in case someone wanted to do it, whatever. So it's flooded. So now they can't do that. So it leaves Batman with no choice. Oh, they somehow can tell. I forget how Talia crashes the car and then she dies from a broken neck or something. I don't know. And she, but not before she gets her last evil monologue in about how she won. But then Bruce is like, okay, I'm just going to go fly it out of the ocean and let it explode out there. And, you know, destroy that part of the world for us. I guess the wildlife is not going to survive there for the next 40 well, to 50 years. Back that way. Huh? Maybe not. Get the wind blow then, like, the blue winter back that way. Maybe not. Put them right uh, I don't know. Whatever. It just, you know, just poisoned the water supply for God knows how long. Yep. But it doesn't matter. Bruce is dead. Alfred returns to come to Bruce's funeral for reasons. Uh, I don't know what that is. Batman. Oh. They reveal a Batman statue because why not? Why would they? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, he saved the city, but still, it's still, you know, right? It's like, whatever. Whatever. And then the movie ends with between two scenes here. We have Gordon Levitt, cop detective, being given coordinates and he finds the Batcave because he's going to be the next Batman. And then Morgan Freeman realizing, oh, that. That bad plane that I built for him earlier that I forgot to put the autopilot in. Hey, someone reprogrammed it, so the autopilot. So I guess Bruce jumped out into the ocean and swam away. Nah, because, like, nah. Maybe he just got out of it before he got to the ocean. Like, nah. I don't know. Whatever the case, he's still alive because Alfred's in, like, Venice or whatever he said he was going. And his dream comes true that he mentions earlier. He sits at a thing, he looks over, and sees Bruce and Selena sitting at the table, he waves and the movie just ends. And uh, I've heard a lot of people saying that, you know, if Alfred just looked and we didn't get it, it would have been a better ending. Yeah. Not if you didn't see Bruce and Selena, which would have been a better ending, sure, but it doesn't say it wouldn't save the movie. No, yeah, the movie's still trash. <laughs> yeah, the movie's still garbage. So yes. even if it did have a, an open ending to ending like that, it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Yes, yes. This Two hour, 44 minute movie felt like two hours, 44. It was a chore to get from this TJ. It was a long movie. Yes. It is too long. long. It's garbage. Yes. Like, I'll I'll never complain ahead technical wise. Did you have a problem with the audio mix not being good? Like the audio, like the, the music was just too loud sometimes over the over the uh, dialogue. No, oh, there's a lot of times I could barely understand and hear what there is. I need the subtitles for this fucking like movie. No, that's I rare for me. But I I also have a DVD, so I'm sure that stuff got would have got fixed. Maybe I was just, I was watching on uh, HBO Max, and you know this should be okay by then. Yeah, but know. they just they just put stuff up there. They don't don't. Like, <sighs> that's you know, I, guess. I don't know. But yeah, this movie was just so- exhausting. <laughs> Like I was telling you off screen, I'm of like three minds of this movie. Yeah. Like objectively, this movie is it's bad. It's a yes. bad movie. Yes. So as a comic book fan, this movie is garbage, complete yes. disaster. But as like a turn your brain off popcorn flick, like an Armageddon or Independence Day, I can see why people would like it. I still don't see it. Like there are moments in this movie where it's like, oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. You you could just. Like, sit there and just watch it with a bunch of friends and make fun of like, it and like stuff like that. Know. Like, what, like, the car, the, all the chase scenes in this movie are boring. Well, that's all, you. Like, Every, just, but people no, get but like, it. Every, this people the like night. car scenes. I do, too. I love good car chases. But compare this to a Dark Knight or the tunnel, like, the Joker and the Slaughter the, uh, truck. Like, the, the, the Dark Knight has way more exciting visual scenes. And I'm not saying this is than better than Dark one. Knight, but I'm just saying I can see why people would be able to turn their brains off and do this, especially if they are a fan of this of this trilogy. I'm not saying that. I agree with it, but I can just say there are elements in it that, you know, people, I can see why people would like it. I get that as visually stunning in the sense of like, okay, they use really good cameras for this movie and it looks pretty. But again, like, it, 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 like okay, the, 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 the football stadium blows up, okay? Uh, there's a bat wing in it. Okay, that's doing really, really exciting. There's no yeah, but like again, wow you're, o- in this. you're overthinking. It was turning like, my brain off. It's two hours forty four minutes. That's a long. Well, movie it's a long off. movie, but like if I it was said, two hours. Sure, I can excuse that because I can turn my brain off a lot of the times. I usually do watch movies. This one is just like it's too long and because I I I do off. know there's I did see a lot of people do like this movie they do they do i'm not literally i just don't get how they so can. like i but like i get if you like i can't do it i like but like i can see if you're just you just have it on you're watching it with a bunch of friends or something and you're having a party or something that's you know not one put on just ever. if if you're like in the batman or something like i get it i just 
Yeah, because you can't be I into dis- Batman I, like this movie, I think, right? I, huh? You can't be into Batman and like this movie, You can. Right? You just have to be a casual Batman fan. You have to be a fan of Super Batman. Casual. and the. F- you have to be a fan of Batman in the sense that you only know Batman from the movies or the cartoon oh, and stuff like me. that. That's me. And I don't like this movie because of Batman. Like, this, this shit's bad. No, Batman you don't like Batman at all. So I like Batman done kind of good. Uh, yeah, but you all villains. you My always thing is I like Batman's villains. And these are bad Batman version villains. I know, but there's there's still an initial hatred of Batman that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still I, but I will always like the villains more than so than Batman, as I will always do. And like this is not a good Bane, nor a good Catwoman. Nor no, good and Batman. I'm like I said, I just I'm just not even arguing that I, I I disagree with I just seen I can see how someone could like this movie. I I'm not, I can't. I just can't I, I'm that. just saying I can see Bits and pieces, why? And if a people, a person who's very casual, who is not looking at the movie in any way, objectively or any way as a critic, could be like, hey, you know. Sorry, it's not going to cause that. But yeah, okay. but yeah, that was Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I do not recommend that movie at all. Oh, no, really, I don't. Long. I don't hate it. No, it, it, that's what I mean. Like, it's there's no hatred towards it or anything. So I can see how someone could get into it. That's dumb. It's very Oh. Yeah, but if you only it's focus, offensively stupid. If it, but if if you don't hate the movie and you just get into the things that are good about the movie, I can see you turning your brain off and just like being a stupid movie you watch. But what's good about it? That's where I'm lost. Like, if this movie's too long, it's too boring. At some point, it's too political, or like the Wall Street thing. Like, like not even putting those connections in the real world. Like, it's still like you know, it's even it's just like the rich are bad, the poor get the power to the poor. Wall Street's bad, shit like that. The whole Bane's bullshit. And it's too, like, it asks you to think, I guess, sometimes, but still dumb. And then, like, okay, the cops run at the guys with the guns. Why would a cop do that? It's like, cops are trained to not do that, right? So, like, why would they all do it? Like, Yeah, but that's what, my like, whole why point. Why am I watching this, this is a dumb movie? And that's the, the whole point. Isn't grand. No, one, no one's looking at that cop scene and saying, why are they running? I mean, I did. But Everyone <laughs> like, is. But no, when no, they, out, no, they are. Looking at no that. one's yes. looking at that, and they're like, they're like, oh, look at all these people. This is going to be a huge fight. That's what they're thinking. But even that fight, okay, even they're thinking that they're probably like under realm, like, oh, this fight is kind of lackluster. I think you're giving people too much credit. Not at all. Not at all. I Not think at all. You are. Like, I mean, granted, this movie made a billion dollars, exactly. But at the same year, compared to uh, Avengers that came out, like, I don't get how this movie because it's third in the series. That's why. Because, like it's I just, said, people just. Enjoy for the things that it is. Like, I don't. I, I, I I'm don't not disagreeing see, with like, you. There's no good. Like I can't even think of one good actor in this movie. Whereas in Transformers, oh, big robots go fight. Okay, this is fun. Like, there's not a single moment like this is visually the Batman vs. Bane fight didn't feel good. Yeah, but people are see that see it differently. They think that this is cool, and some people are thinking like this is. Like, the really, you know, into it people are like, this is actually kind of deep in this way, if you look at it this way, you know what I mean? I hope that's the case. And, like, I'm not really trying to belittle anyone from thinking that or saying that. I just personally cannot see how they are thinking. Well, that. no. Like, I we're uh, we're arguing what other people would think right now. I know. And I usually can defend these kind of dumb shits. Like, I defended a Batman on a muscle. Like, I'm usually on the opposite side of, of I know. this argument. So Same. It's... It's like, but like, like I'm just, I just cannot see what can be, and like, but just because I can see what other people, just because I can see what other people are doing, doesn't mean it's going to affect my score. And yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> well, see, I don't know where to score this movie. Like, I, I, I last night I was, I was, I was trying to figure a score. Like, I can't do that. Right now. I'll think of it later. I still don't know, like, because I don't, I'm not angry at this movie. I'm just like, I'm kind of offended for how stupid it is, and it's trying to be like. It's trying to put his big boy pants on. Like, I'm better than the last one. And I'm a really smart, clever movie. And like, you're not a movie. You just sit down and take this pants. Do not like, stop it. So let me ask you this. Is this better than Dark Knight? And remember, so, I, I changed my opinions on Dark Knight after seeing it. This is for you, but yes. Like, so uh, no, we, movie, I think I think we both ended up at a five with Dark Knight. Uh, maybe less. Probably that. But I but see at that same time, though, I knew going in this movie wasn't good. Because the first time I saw it, like, this is not good. So that's where, like, I still have the same feelings I did when I first saw this movie. And that's, like, which is good or bad because it doesn't answer any of the things I hated or, like, disliked. It just reinforced that kind of shit. Well, I ended up on a four. Oh, that's too high, I think. But also, I think threes and twos are too low. Yeah, that's why I ended up at a four. Why are you at a four? Because it's a below average film. Just objectively, it's a below average film. 
Well, it's not a three or a two or a one for you. Because then, if you're going into that, it's coming. I'm coming at it from a comic book bias. Yeah. So, like, the things that really bother me are like the stuff that, like, that's not Bane. <laughs> You know what I mean? But yeah, so like, that, then why does that make it not why does that not make the movie lower for because you? Because that doesn't because Tom Hardy did a, a decent job in it as the character he was given. Yeah, but as a character so it's like that you are. I'm already I've already taken points off because of the poor writing, and it would only get lower because of the acting. And the acting isn't bad for, and stuff like that. Now, poor writing as in just dialogue and motivation or poor writing as in ad- adapting a uh, character? Oh, it lost points for all of that. Only to make it a four. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, you you it looks fine. It's There's nothing visually st- poor about this movie. It's, I think, again, from the film side, the audio mix was just strong. The editing was bad. Like, I didn't have that problem I mean, the editing and pacing was also was also a problem. That's why it also lost yeah. points. But so, like, but it's it, it's and to me, it's just too much rule of cool. It's a polished. It's a really fine polished turn, and that's what the thing is. It gets a polished, shiniest turn, that's right? Seen. Which makes it below average. Which makes below average. But and now it's a turn trying to pass itself off as like a, a shiny P. Like you're not healthy. You're still stupid and bad. I don't like you, turn. Like yeah. I, I do not like this movie. Yeah, I know, but that's that's again. I just, I personally can't find anything. It, it just it just depends on whether or not you want to give it an objective score or a bias score. But what's bias for what I'm saying though? Well, if you're taking your what your um what other people are saying about it, and you're using you know everyone holding the movie up as something that's not, that's kind of a biased opinion. Oh, so you're not give a higher score than I should give. What you're saying, or even a lower score than you should have. Yes, oh, like like if, like, right here. like but like like if you're going into a. a if you're going into a movie and you're kind of hating it because everyone else likes it and you give it a lower score because of that, that's kind of biased. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't do that, so. So, like, but if you're, like, if you're, and if you're taking your own biases into account when you're judging something and just not looking at it objectively, like, if I looked at this biasly, I'd probably be more at a two or a three because of all the Batman stuff. But objectively, I think it's a four. How's it a four though? Like, that's why I just looked, like, that's too high for me. like I do not find anything good about this movie. So maybe it's a one or two for me. I'm gonna give this probably I'm gonna give this a two out of ten. And I know that's harsh as shit, but I but truly like, cannot find anything I, entertaining I, or good I, for me. I think the visuals are fine. That's it. That's I, it. I, I, I like I like she's not important in it, but I like Anne Hathaway's character. I think Tom Hardy did fine. I I think most of the acting is f- done well. So I mean, that's two points right there. Visually and the acting are good enough. Besides that, all the technical specs are bad. The dialogue and the thought process of the rule of cool outweighs the logic in this movie. The movie's too long. I just cannot. There's the action. It's lackluster and bad. It feels like a stage play. Not yeah, not but- on purpose. Like it's like it's the but the amount of money that went to make this movie a thing and the amount of money it made this it just does not justify a good rating to me. I just, I just there's there's literally nothing like guys look at this scene in this movie. This is not cool. Don't you want to watch a two hour forty four version of that scene? Not really. No. There's nothing in this movie that's like Marcus. I, I mean, and, watch and the rule of cool didn't really bother me as much as it bothered you. Oh. I thought some of it was neat. I, I actually, I'm jealous of that. This is the same problem I had like, with Skywalker like, film, the uh, like, Rise of Skywalker, right? The last one. It's just too much of like, like it's silly and stupid. But watching the football field cave in on each other is cool. That's why they advertised it, you know? Yeah, but like, but like it's it's neat. So there's 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 an element of of that to it that you know that it make me like like I didn't. Even I felt the movie was dragging, but I didn't feel it was dragging all the way through. Oh, man. Teach. Oh, man. I had a hard time sitting through this. It, it was, again, it was a chore. Like, there was, like, the first act is a real chore. Just just the yes. slog of introducing everything. But, you know, the climax didn't feel long at all to me. So it was like, it was, if the, God, it all felt long. The beginning set up the first act long. The middle part where Tabane takes over and it's kind of anarchy, but not going to show it because he's can't show anarchy for some reason. That's bad. And then the third act of like, here's all the twists. Here is the big fight kind of thing. And then more. And they fight. And after the fight happens, the twist happens. It's still like there are 20 minutes of the movie left of them trying to get people out the city and defuse the bomb. It's like, oh my God, just end. It's just this movie overstayed its welcomes. Like, this hurry up. It's, I'm not disagreeing. It's way too long. This movie, there's yeah. no reason for it to be two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> but the <laughs> things. But the yeah. things that would be cut from this movie for me is what I gave it points for. That's fit. You know what I mean? Like what? Like so? 
like some of the acting, some of the things that are there, some of the things that I think are cool, some of the um, some of the scenes between the characters and stuff like that. The, like the things that are unnecessary are the reason why it's kind of getting held up in my mind a little bit. I want to re-edit this movie. I haven't said that in so long. But I really want to re-edit this movie from the footage we got in this movie. And I think I can make it to an hour 45 and it'd be a tight hour. I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take that task on and just re-edit this trash movie. Because you could take Anne Hathaway character. As much as I, like, I feel bad doing that, but take that character and her plot out, her development, it's fine. Like All her sequences, not needed. The twists, maybe keep it, maybe not. I, it's just a flaw in this movie you can get rid of, and it'd be a tighter, stronger film. I want to say I'm going to make a fantastic and Oscar worthy, but it'd be better than it is, I think. Without using any deleted footage or whatever. All right. That's all. Again, I'm I, and, and the, the two I'm giving it is not like f this movie, hope it burns. It's just for me, I just did not jive with it, and I st- I just don't see how people can. That's all. If you like it, you like it. Good for you. I don't get it, but whatever. We're both in agreement. It's a below average movie. You're just more severe about it's below averageness. Yes, yes. It's a piece of shit. Oh, it was a banquet I saw. I'm not gonna find it. Just like these people. I'm going to do this. It's, hold on. So Bane says something in the movie. It's right here. So Bane says, and during the Bane Beverage Batman fight, he says to Batman, the theatricality and deception are powerful agents to the unlimited, uh, uninitiated, un- 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 right? That's what I, that's how I felt about this movie. It's theatrical and deceptive to make it look like it's better than it is. Eh, well, I use Batman tactics. Good for it. <laughs> this movie. Anything else, DJ? Nope. Okay.